All right, I'm here with Philip Cohen from the University of Maryland, College Park. Philip directs Soch Archive. That's a uh, platform for sharing research findings. Uh, and uh, we're uh, having a brief chat about something uh, interesting that uh, Philip posted on Twitter. Wait, before we get into it, Philip, uh, maybe can you tell our uh, listeners what Soch Archive, just a really brief version. Uh, sure. Social Archive is um, uh, S O C A R X I V. Social Archive um, uh, is a uh, derived from Archive um, A R X I V, um, which is a uh, a paper server in uh, that started in math and physics. So what we do is we host. Um, papers in the social sciences, arts, humanities, education, and law, basically anything anybody listening to this is likely to write. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, we um, will host papers that are conference papers, papers that are under review somewhere, papers that have already been published, um, but you've got a free version you're allowed to share. It's basically a, a paper sharing site to um, accelerate and make more efficient um, the distribution of research. And what's the goal in the broader process of developing knowledge and teaching? Like what, what does Social Archive hope to accomplish? Well, um, we, we're in a, we're, we're in a, a scholarly communication system to use the library term that has a lot of deficiencies and inefficiencies. Um, we can't fix it all, but um, the, what the paper server allows us to do is to, um, improve it in certain respects. Mostly um, it's faster, so you can get research out right away. Uh, And while doing that, it's also better than sort of just slapping it up on a website because we um, archive it properly. We, we have the, we have good metadata for indexing. We give DOI identifiers and a, um, a a stable uh, persistent um, a location on the web for the paper. So when you update it and make new versions, um, everything's in, in one place. And then we also provide a way for people to um, connect their research materials to the paper. So it's also good for enhancing sort of um, uh, replicability and transparency in research. That's awesome. It's a great project. Uh, where, where can people go on the web if they want to learn more about the project? Um, so you can go right to socialarchive.org um, uh, and you'll and it'll take you right to the uh, the screen where you can search the papers that are already there or um, or upload a paper and, or, or you can go to socialopen, S-O-C-O-P-E-N dot org. And that's our blog and you can read uh, essays and um, there's a there's a frequently asked questions page that's very helpful there with the tutorial. Awesome. Okay. And so recently, Philip had a great tweet, and uh, he was nice enough to agree to come chat about it. Uh, So the anthropologists are uh, creating a repository. Is that right? Right. Well, the the American Anthropological Association seems to have signed on with Wiley, who is the publisher of uh, most of their journals, um, to put up a preprint site. Um, uh, to, and uh, in in theory, this is a great idea. Um, you can, like with Social Archive, you can start disseminating work in the pre-review stage and then link it up to published papers when they're published. But what the, uh, the petition I shared um, uh, was complaining about was that the association had apparently jumped into a relationship with Wiley without considering the possibility of Doing a, a performing a similar service on a, a non-commercial and more open platform, and and, uh, and you have concerns that uh, that type of thing could happen here in sociology, right? Well, um, you know, our um, just to back up for a second, you know, our whole publishing system is really working on an old kind of 18th or 19th century model of journals, right. and um, right. as the internet has threatened the business model of journals, the big publishers of journals are trying to expand their um, their reach. And one of the ways they're doing it is sort of, I guess I'm not an economic sociologist, I guess you'd call it vertical integration, or they're, um, they're expanding to cover more parts of what we call the research life cycle. So um, they don't like that um, people are putting up nonprofit open preprint servers, because those are sort of taking research out of the journal flow. And that's their that's their wheelhouse in terms of a business model. So um, SAGE, which publishes the American Sociological Association journals, um, recently put up a preprint server called Advance or Advances. And what I'm afraid they're going to do um, is 
they'll encourage people to put their papers there and then you'll be able to submit your paper directly to an ASA journal or a, another SAGE journal mm. right from that site, which in, in, in principle is good. The paper's open, anybody mm. can read it, but it's also entering the queue for peer review. Mm. The problem is sort of the capture of that by SAGE. So what happens if the paper is rejected? Um, you'll get an email. I'm predicting because I've seen similar things. Mm. You'll get an email that says, oh, we're sorry, your paper has been rejected by ASR. Would you like to consider submitting it to one of our lower status journals? I mm. mean, um, sort of push you through their product suite. And that's one concern. The other concern is um, after the paper is accepted somewhere, um, they're not going to want to let you keep sharing that free version. Right. Um, or they're not going to want to let you update that that first draft to a later draft um, and share that. So they're going to want to drive people to their paywalled version. So that's that's what I'm kind of worried about. So it'll basically the concern is that if we if one company manages to monopolize all of the preprints and the the prints themselves, there's a possibility that they could interrupt our ability to share these findings outside of paywalls. Right. I mean, it's it's a tricky thing because it's it's like Facebook. You know, they're, they're going to provide something which is free that people want, um, right. but, uh, you know, it's good for them. <laughs> do what Can they do that? Can uh, – I guess they can, can't they? Uh, like basically decide to close off all of our preprints. They just have to turn the, change the terms of the contract, right? Well, um, it's actually right now – this is a – slightly technical issue, but right now ASA has a policy that says um, you can distribute preprints of your papers, even if they're subsequently published in an ASA journal. Mm. But the contract you sign with SAGE um, actually slightly contradicts that and says that there's a 12-month period after the article is published when you can't share the final version. In other words, you have a version that's before you send it to review. Mm -hmm. Um, Then it gets improved in the review process or Mm -hmm. at least changed in the review process. And then you've got sort of a final version, which then they accept copyright format and distribute. And it's really a shame that authors can distribute the unimproved version, but not distribute the the final version. And so uh, Um, right now you actually have this 12 month period in the SAGE contract where you're not allowed to do that. I think a lot of people do anyway, but uh, we should clean that up. Yeah. Yeah. What about, uh, do you really, do you think that there's that big a role for the publishers in the future of, of, of the science? Like, are they doing that much anymore? I mean, I, I understand when they were printing physical copies and sending them out and they were actually acting as publishers of something, but nowadays do we even need them? Um, the short answer, I think, is no, we don't, but we are definitely stuck with them. Um, and and partly because um, just sort of uh, uh, inertia, that's how we do it, and partly because they do some things that we, that we want. I mean, I think instead of getting rid of journals, I think what we need to do is sort of think about breaking up their different functions. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nice to have a journal – to have a journal editor – Um, uh, or editors select the most important articles in a subject. And it's good to have somebody who um, makes them look nice and markets and distributes them. Uh, And it's, it's good to have somebody organize the peer review process Mm. um, and make sure that it's fair and so on. But there's no reason that all those tasks have to be carried out by a journal, especially not a for-profit journal. Um, But I think, you know, if I could put up a paper and it's free to the world Um, And then a publisher comes along and says, look, we think we can package this um, and put it into the Journal of Important Research and sell it and make a profit and more people will read it. I would love that as an author, Hmm. as long as I can still give away a free copy and they're not they're not owning the work. Um, So so I think there could be a role for uh, for journal publishers. I just think that right now they're playing too many roles. And, and for our colleagues who are concerned about, you know, the uh, influence of publishers in science and uh, are concerned about open science, what can they do? Well, um, the first thing is to um, – sh- I, I think it's really good and good to get in the habit of being more transparent about our research and not let the journals control when and how it's distributed. So that's one, and that's why the social archive and the preprint server concept, I think, is so important. Hmm. I also think we should modify our author agreements. Um, We should think about which 
journals we want to publish with. Um, instead of sort of being led to uh, believe there's no alternative but to publish in X and Y journal for our careers, um, think about alternatives and then read that contract and realize that you can modify that contract. Um, uh, at once the journal has said they want to publish your article, you've got a little moment of leverage. You can cross out that sentence that says, I won't distribute this and, and, uh, uh, and ask for that revision. And a lot of times they will, they will accept that. And then uh, one other thing we can do now is think about who we're going to review for. Hmm. You know, um, people like to say that peer reviewing is volunteer labor. It's not quite. It's really more like a subsidy by our institutions uh, who are paying our salaries to the publishers. Um, but we can think about allocating that time to um, to research and research platforms that uh, serve our values in, in wider ways. So that's kind of abstract, but I just think before you sign on, say, yeah, sure, I'll give Elsevier six hours of my time. Mm -hmm. Think about what you could do with that time that might be more uh, enhancing of of your values. <laughs> it's a big, it's a big complicated system and it's daunting for people and people are just trying to get their careers going and trying to concentrate on their research. So I'm totally sympathetic um, that it's, it's hard to get a grip on this. And um, uh, you know, I'd, you know, let's just stick with it and see if we can chip away at this thing. And I appreciate your um, giving it a little attention on the show. All right. Philip Cohen is a sociologist at the university of Maryland college park. He is also the director of Soch Archive. If you're interested in Soch Archive, you can uh, visit sochopen.org, S-O-C-O-P-E-N. Thank you, Philip. Thank you. 